Please join in prayer with our celebrant, Bishop Douglas Desitel, as we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Coming together as God's family, let us first prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins and failings, asking the Lord for his healing and forgiveness in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord saw the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see in your, your face. face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward. From God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks 
the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. What a great day for us today to celebrate this important solemnity. The church designates this day every year as a holy day, a holy day of obligation. There are several of these throughout the church's liturgical year, and they are so designated to call our attention to important truths of our Catholic faith. And one of these is, of course, the communion of saints. 
and we celebrate on November the 1st, All Saints' Day. To call to mind for all of us the fact, first of all, that all of us have an eternal destiny to also be saints. All of us are called to be saints. Also that we are in union with all of the men and women baptized into the body of Jesus Christ throughout the whole of history, that we belong to that same body of Christ with them, that we look to them as our examples in life. Who are the saints that we celebrate today? The saints are human beings, like you and me, men and women from all different walks of life, young people, old people, tall people, short people, people who lived a long time, people who lived a short time. They're just like us, human beings fallen and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have the mistaken notion that the great saints that we read about in our history books or the great saints that we're taught about in school somehow had a better advantage, an easier time at being holy than we do that somehow they didn't have to go through the struggles, they didn't have to face the temptations, they didn't have the hardships or the sicknesses or the arguments in their family or all the other things that we experience as human beings. They were somehow exempt from all of that. Nothing could be further from the truth. The saints had no greater advantage over being good followers of Jesus Christ than we do today. The saints were baptized, men and women. They were tempted to sin. They had sicknesses. They got old. They endured hardships. They had disagreements in their families. Some of them were banished from their countries. Some of them were put to death and martyred for their faith. And what makes them stand out, however, is that they endured to the end. They remained faithful through all of that. And so in the church, we celebrate the saints, our brothers and sisters. In a way, they are the models of our lives. They remind us that it is possible with God's help, with the grace of Jesus Christ, to be faithful until the end of our lives. They remind us that this world that we live in today, this journey that we are passing through for a time, is only for a short period of time in comparison to eternity. But that each and every one of us have an eternal destiny to live with God forever, like the saints. They remind us of that. Many people have a patron saint or a special saint that they pray to, one that they can identify with, one who may have shared in the same illness that they have, one who may be faced the same temptations that they had, one who endured a certain struggle like that person does. And so we are able to intercede with that saint and say, please pray to the Lord for me that I have the same graces that you received to be able to endure this particular trial and remain faithful to Christ throughout my life. The saints are there to intercede and to pray for us. Many people misunderstand that we worship the saints. We worship only God. We intercede with the saints. We ask them to pray for us because they are so close to God. How many times when we were kids and we knew our grandmother or a favorite aunt was a very holy person who said their rosary every day, went to mass all the time, and any time we needed special prayers, we'd go to our grandmother or our favorite aunt and say, Grandma, please say a prayer for me. I'm having a real hard time with this. 
or we go to them and say, I have a big test today in school. Please say a prayer for me that I do well on my test. The same is true with our brothers and sisters who are now in heaven and are freed of all the distractions of being in this life. They can intercede for us. They can show us a model of Christian living and what it means to be faithful to Christ. And the two feast days that we celebrate today, All Saints Day, and tomorrow, All Souls Day, remind us of that great truth of our Catholic faith, the communion of saints, that we're not alone, that we have a plan in God's mind for us to be with him forever and to share in the life of the saints and in the life of the Most Holy Trinity. And that we on earth can ask the saints to intercede for us in heaven. That we on earth can pray for our deceased loved ones who are awaiting their final purification before entering into heaven. And that the saints in turn can pray for us. For they want us to be in their company and close to Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so on this feast of all saints, we glorify the saints we worship in a way God by glorifying the saints, by concentrating on how they mirrored the person of Jesus Christ by their holy lives. And we give worship to God by honoring the saints today. Just like the moon borrows its light from the sun, so the saints that shine so brightly for us borrow their light from God and from Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have heard God's word proclaimed. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's love has raised to glory those who were faithful unto death and given them an everlasting share in his holiness. Let us offer our petitions by responding Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints. That God grant Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and all clergy, compassion and care to live the gospel in love and service to all people. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints. That all who honor the saints today may be inspired to imitate their faith and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints. That all those buried in our cemetery may now enjoy the vision of God forever. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints. That all who have served and are serving in the armed forces will know the gratitude of all Americans. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints that God may reward with everlasting life all who show goodness to us, and that he may grant eternal rest to all who have died in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord, through all the saints. 
God of love, our strength and protection, hear the prayers of your church. Grant that when we come to you in faith, our prayers may be answered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Cleanse me from all my sins. Thank you. Let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace the Lord be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace, so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing and dismissal, I'd like to announce that immediately after Mass, we will do a blessing of the cemetery, but because God has given us lots of water to bless all of the graves, we'll say the prayers from underneath the foyer of the parish center next to the cathedral here. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Made. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.